I like Pierce Scuba Tech Tips. Kevin says he wants you to be more enthusiastic. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you today about a visual examination. Now, there's a reason why I'd like to do this, guys. Just a short while ago, I forget which tech tip it was, but I got a comment from a fellow, and in his comment, which was very a, a good, good comment, covered several important points, and, and they're points that I've heard before. Excellent comment. I forget who it was. Thank you, though. But in there, the one little line that I read, and it made me wince. <laughs> That's a wince. He said, visual examinations are a ripoff by dive stores. Okay, everybody's entitled to their opinion. That's what's called free speech. They can say whatever they want. You don't have to agree. They can't force you to change your mind. But they can say what they want. And this is what he said. Visual examinations are a ripoff by dive stores. So I took exception to that, and I explained what visual examinations are. They actually are a diver instituted method of keeping the sport safe. That's right. Prior, and I was, there, I was there for that. I was actually working at that time in Florida and, and there, were, there were more than a few problems in Florida with dive tanks. Yeah, they're called explosions. We don't like to use that word. We don't like to talk about people. A friend of mine who lost his eye, other divers were actually killed. The fill station operators, people lost fingers and other things as well. So there were more than a few problems, particularly in, in the marine environment. Let's call it Florida. And so the dive industry got together, dive store operators, certification agencies. They, they got together. This wasn't a formal thing, but they had to do something about it. So there were committees formed, and, and they decided, you know what, because of the nature of the sport, even though other applications of high-pressure cylinders do not require it, we should have visual examinations every six months in Florida, usually six months. Throughout the industry worldwide, it has been decided that one year is sufficient to have a visual examination. And the visual examination is exactly what the word says. A, a, a properly trained technician inspects the tank inside and out to ensure that in that one year period, there has not been any substantial corrosion which weakens the walls enough that they might explode. That's what it is. So it is not a ripoff. As I explained to this chap who made the comment, visual examinations are a darn nuisance. A dive store operator doesn't make enough money to cover his cost of doing the darn visual examination. It's not a ripoff, trust me. If you're paying, I don't know what you pay for a visual, I'm with a 10, 12, 15 bucks, something like that. Not worth my time. But it's important. It has to be done, so we have to provide the service to divers. So that's why we do visual examinations. I thought I'd quickly show you what's involved, and then maybe the chap who's what if he's watching, sorry, I've forgotten your name, uh, uh, maybe he'll say, gosh, you know, they do a lot of work for a visual examination. It has to be done. What is it, a visual examination? You already know that high-pressure cylinders have to have a hydrostatic test, a hydrostatic test every five years. A hydrostatic test is very simply a measure of the elasticity of the tank, of the bottle, if you're in your bottle, right, uh, of the tank, of the metal. Because as the model expands when it fills and then contracts, expands when it fills and then contracts, and as that happens, the metal slowly but surely becomes less elastic, becomes brittle, if you like, until eventually, when you try to fill it and it starts to expand, it explodes. It won't stretch, so it cracks and breaks and explodes. So that's what the hydrostatic test does. It tests the elasticity of the metal. We might spend a bit of time on that sometime. The visual examination is entirely different. The visual examination doesn't test anything. It just checks to ensure every 12 months that there's no sizable corrosion on the inside of that cylinder caused by water, dirt, bad air. There's a variety of ways that the tank would begin to corrode. If it's a steel tank, it may be more likely because steel, as you know, rusts and rust flakes off and it rusts some more and eventually eat right through. Uh, aluminum tanks are not quite as likely to corrode, but they certainly can very, very easily. If you're not a very careful diver, you don't follow the rules, if you don't take care of your tank, if you, if you let your tank get completely empty, if it gets completely empty so when you open the tank, air does not come out, well then what's going in? It's really hard to say. If you take your tank into a very warm dive store, and they usually are warm and humid, and your tank just came out of your air-conditioned car, and you open the valve, that tank is going to suck warm, moist air in. That's right. And then, the next time you jump in cool water, 
that warm, moist air will condense and you get water inside the tank. And if it's an aluminum tank, that can be very, very hazardous because the aluminum oxide that protects the aluminum dissolves. Now you have bare aluminum and on it goes. So a visual examination is a one-year mandatory examination to ensure that there's no uh, sizable corrosion. How does it actually work? What's involved? Well, first of all, the, uh, the dive so you take your tank in and say, hey, I need a, my annual visual. Well, he'll take the tank and get all your information and send you on your way because the visual examination takes a little bit of time. You can't sort of walk in and wait for it, not, not usually. So he takes your tank. The first thing he will do is get, take down all the information. Uh, the manufacturer, the serial number, uh, last hydrostatic test date, last visual test date, and he'll re record all that information. That takes 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes gone already. You keep, keep track of the time. The next thing he will do is he will inspect the outside of the tank. The bottom, very carefully, the edges. This doesn't have a boot. This is a pony bottle, which I'm using for demonstration today. He will check for any bad scratches, bulges, any problems on the tank on the outside, any indications of abuse, I don't mean that you've abused it, but anything that indicates this tank has suffered some damage, dropped on the rocks or whatever, bounced off the back of your pickup, <laughs> and so on. Then, once he's done that, he will then remove the valve. Now, of course, that requires he takes all the air out. So he takes all the air to the valve, and then he removes the valve. The valve's are really only in hand tight. I think we talked about it a while ago, didn't we, Kevin? It's really only hand tight, a bit more than hand tight. But he'll take the valve out. Now, as he's doing that, he will inspect the valve. If he determines that the valve needs to be serviced, he will call you and say, hey, I'm doing a visual on your tank. I've discovered your valve has a problem. The knob is not working, whatever. It's deformed, whatever. Something's happened to it. The safety's leaking, and so it should be serviced. And in that time, at that time, you'll authorize him to service your valve, and he'll do that. So he'll do a quick examination of the valve. So we've dumped the air. We've taken the valve out, done a quick examination in another 10 minutes. 20 minutes elapsed so far. He will usually check. In fact, here at our dive store, we always change the face o ring. A bit of a nuisance to get out. That's going to take a couple of minutes. We'll get that old O-ring out and save it to show to you. We'll also at that time take off the neck valve, the, the valve neck O-ring. That's the O-ring on the neck itself. You'll take that off and it's going to be replaced. We don't, we don't ever reuse those O-rings. These are extreme high pressure O-rings. They were O-rings, but now after at least a year of high pressure. Now they're flat rings. <laughs> yeah, they change from rings to washers. And if you've ever seen one, they take that off. And he will then carefully, carefully clean those threads because those threads are going to back into the tank that he's examining. Clean those threads very carefully. Make sure they're all good and clean. Another 10 minutes. Now we're up the better part of 30 minutes, right? Now we'll get to the tank. So now what happens? Well, first of all, he'll inspect the threads and the neck to ensure that that neck area is clean, not corroded. So when he puts the valve back in, it'll go in smoothly, and that the area, the, the groove there that the O-ring seals in is also clean and ready to go. If it is not, if there's any indication of some corrosion or damage, there's a special tool that he can put in there to give it a spin a few times, and it cleans that right up nice and neatly. Another five minutes gone, 25 minutes so far. We'll call it 25. Okay, so finally, after all that, now he gets to look at the inside. How does he do that? Well, generally speaking, the first thing they will do, you know, this order may vary slightly from store to store. He will use one of these things. This is a tank inspection light. That's right. It's a proper, proper light for inspecting tanks, right? This is not a, a candle on a string. And this light is very, very bright, good and bad. It's very bright. It's good because it illuminates the whole tank really well. It's also bad because it doesn't cast shadows. So sometimes what I have found with these extremely bright lights is that they, they light it up so well you can't see things. It's almost like driving, you know, driving west at sunset. You can't see out the window. So you have to be very careful. What we have found in our training program here is we find you turn it a little bit so it throws shadows. So sometimes you'll pick up little imperfections. But anyway, essentially, he looks inside the tank just like this. Looks all around on the bottom to see if there's anything in there. A little bit of dirt down in there, too. That shouldn't be there. And all up and down the sides, all the way around like that. And this tank looks to be awfully, awfully good. Now, sometimes dive stores will use a little mirror like this to check the neck because where this neck comes up like like so, it's hard. You, 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 you can't see around corners. At least I can't anyway. So he'll use a little mirror like this and reach down inside and check the neck. Same thing. With the light in there still. So it's a little, oh yeah, that looks nice. Oh yeah, the neck's in good shape. Neck's in good shape. So at this point, the tank looks to be awfully good. Spotlessly clean inside. The neck is good. The threads seem to be fine. So we're done, right? No, we're not done. The threads are critical. It's the threads that hold that valve in. You want the valve to stay in the tank. 
Yeah. When you take your tank into the, to the, the doctor to have it filled, you want the valve to stay in the tank as he's filling it. 3,000 PSA. You don't want that. Yeah, exactly. So now he will take another special instrument. What are we at now? Third special instrument, fourth, and he will check the threads. This special instrument is illuminated. So he'll look down in here now and he can turn this and he can see every thread. Yep, all the way around to check each of the threads to see there's no corrosion, no damage. The threads are still sharp and clean and will actually hold your valve in. And then you'll move it up a little bit and examine the next row. This actually goes down past the edge where the threads begin right up to the very top. So the threads all in this tank look really good. So what have we done? Well, we have checked the outside. No damage, no abuse. We have checked, taken the valve out. We have checked the valve threads. They look at the row, okay? Pardon me, we have checked the threads on the inside of the tank, we've checked the groove, and we've checked the inside, including the shoulder. This tank is in great shape. Looks really, really good. Now we have to reverse that whole process. Where are we now, Kevin? 35, 40 minutes? 35 minutes. So then he takes the, uh, your, your, the valve, your valve, and he puts it, he, he's cleaned already these threads, remember? Then he puts the new O ring on, right? I haven't said anything about grease, have I? No. You don't put grease on new O-rings. New O-rings come from the factory ready to use. There's a few exceptions. Some dynamic O-rings, O-rings that move and so on. But these are not dynamic O-rings. These don't do anything except seal 3,000 PSI. So this new O-ring is put onto the valve carefully. These threads are sharp. So he has to be very careful to slide that on without rolling or twisting, slide it carefully up to the top. And then what he will do, because it's good to have a little bit of grease on the threads themselves, he'll take a little bit of grease and put a bit of grease on the very bottom of the valve threads. So as he puts this back into the tank and threads it in, that little bit of grease will slowly spread through the threads as he turns it in, but it will not grease the O-ring. Why don't we want to grease the O-ring? First of all, it's new. It's a rubbery right from the factory, ready to seal. Secondly, 3,000 PSI. That's why you don't want to grease the O-ring, right? It's like a slip and slide. I've had a slip and slide, you know, the kids with the hose and the plastic and you step on it. Same thing can happen here. Not uncommon for a neck O-ring to extrude, which is a fancy way of saying the next O-ring actually comes out and bubbles out and boom. I've actually seen them come out. You can look and you see the little black O-ring slowly being pushed out through that crack. Yeah, there is a very tiny crack there, particularly on a well-used tank. And if this isn't installed, if the O-ring isn't new, and if the O-ring is greased too much, the O-ring will slowly come out, and you see a little black bubble, and all of a sudden, boom! And all, yeah, so you don't want that to happen. It goes in, it goes in with the exact proper amount of torque, using a proper torque wrench, or whatever method the store uses, and your tank is finished. New visual sticker on it, new visual sticker on it and the fill and you're ready to go. So how long did that take? 30 minutes? Let's say 30 minutes. Let's be fair. It took more than 30 minutes to do it completely. 30 minutes. Yeah, I'm sorry, but not worth my time. Plus, I have to buy the light, $150. I have to buy the thread inspection, $300. These, these are cheap. O-ring, everything else? No, guys, please, please, don't complain about visual examinations. They keep the sport safer. They keep us all safer. And it's not a money grab, not in my opinion anyway, and I've done a million visuals, okay? So next time you go in for a visual, say thanks to the dive store owner. Say thanks for two reasons. He's doing it for you. And secondly, who gets hurt if a tank is not in good shape and the tank has a problem, a tank is Who gets hurt? The dive store operator, not the diver. Once the tank is filled and on your back, no problem. It's when it's being filled. Let's think about that next time. Anyway, that's how a visual examination is done. I hope that was interesting. I have to go and look at this tank now because this tank apparently has a crack in it. Yeah, so I get the thread examiner out and apparently there's a crack in here. One of my staff found it. So we'll find out whether or not this tank is going to pass the visual examination. You don't want this tank. Yeah, we found it. And there you go, Alec Pierce, Tech Tips, how to do a scuba tank visual. I hope that was interesting for you. If you have questions or comments, send them in. I love it. Bye-bye.